Here's an example of computing a joint cumulative distribution function. Let x1 and x2 be continuous random variables with joint probability density function f of x1 x2 is equal to x1 times x2 for x1 between 0 and 1 and x2 between 0 and 2. Well here is a picture if we let x1 go from 0 to 1 and let x2 go from 0 to 2 and this region which is labeled 2 happens to be the support script A. What is tricky about joint cumulative distribution functions is they need to be addressed in a lot of different regions, a lot of different pieces. So the definition of the joint cumulative distribution function capital F of x1, x2 is the probability that the random variable capital X1 is less than or equal to little x1 and capital X2 is less than or equal to little x2. Because of these two less than or equals there and in addition the and connecting the comma you can think of this probability as the area underneath the joint probability density function to the southwest of the point x1 and x2. So begin here in region 1 and by the way region 1 is going to be quadrants 2, 3, and 4, everything out here. And what you do is you pick some point in region 1. And I will pick this point right here. Once you've picked a point, which we are going to call x1 and x2, you then examine the probability of falling to the southwest of that particular point. What is the probability of falling in here? Well, there's none of the support values in there, so the assumed value for the joint probability density function is zero there and because it is zero the double integral to the southwest of this point is going to give you zero so when we start to construct this joint cumulative distribution function over its five regions and the way you get these five regions is this is where the limits wind up changing over the two easy regions at least the first one which is x1 being less than or equal to 0 or x2 is less than or equal to 0 we get 0 as a joint cumulative distribution function. Now let's pick the off the other easy one region 5 which is the any point x1 x2 which is to the northeast of the point 1 2 well, when you're out here in region f 5, I picked off a point right there, I now want the volume underneath the probability density function to the southwest of this particular point, which I'm generically thinking of as x1, x2. Well, in that case, we know that x1 is greater than or equal to 1 and x2 is greater than or equal to 2 and in that particular case any point that you choose out here in region 5 if you look at the volume underneath the probability density function to the southwest of that point you know you're going to pick up all of the support and the area under any probability um, density function is always going to be 1 and so in this case it is 1 on that particular part of the um, definition of x1 and x2. So obviously the the three tricky parts now are 2, 3, and 4. They're going to take a little bit of work. They will fit in here and you will have the joint cumulative distribution function broken into five different pieces. Now I'm only going to pick one of these and then I'll leave the rest to you. I'm going to pick off region 4. And so what I do is I pick a point in region 4 and I call that point x1 and x2. I then draw the area to the southwest of that point and I'm going to find the area underneath, I'm sorry, the volume underneath the joint probability density function to the southwest of here. 
Well, the support script A is this, so I know when I'm integrating over this part here, I just get a zero. The same is true when I'm integrating down here, for example. So the only part that is what you might call interesting is this part right here. So in region four, here's a little bit of scratch work, f of x1, x2 will be a double integral. And we'll put in the limits in a minute. And it'll be a double integral over the joint probability density function, which I'm going to write as w1, w2, because x1 and x2 may appear in the limits somewhere. Put dw2, dw1, which means our strips are running up and down. So first of all, with respect to w2, what is the name of this lower curve here? Well, the lower curve there is just w2 equals 0. And what is the name of the upper curve? Well, the upper curve is w2 equals this height, which is x2. These strips start at 0, but they don't go out to x1. Instead, they stop at 1 because that's where the support cuts off. So there is the appropriate setup for the double integral. You could work that out. You would put that piece in here as one of the five chunks. You'd define its, uh, its uh, support values out here, not support values, but the, uh, the domain of definition out here. And you would have another piece of the cumulative distribution function. One thing that is of interest is how do you go from having a joint cumulative distribution function to a univariate cumulative distribution function? If you wanted, <coughs> excuse me, the CDF of x alone, by definition, that's the probability x is less than or equal to x. I can add on the condition y is less than infinity. That's not changing that probability statement. This will be the limit as y goes to infinity that y is less than or equal to y, or, the, or this limiting probability right here. This is the joint cumulative distribution function, so it can be written in this fashion. So essentially, if you put an infinity out here as your, as your y value, that will come back and give you the uh, cumulative distribution function of x alone.